everybody. Today we're going to be talking about how to practice lip trills on the trombone. So have you ever been in a rehearsal and gotten to a part of your music where you see maybe a dotted half note or whole note with this squiggly line on top? Or maybe you've seen the same figure on a solo piece you're working on like the David Concertino or more so Symphonique? Well, today you're in luck. I'm here to help you work through that. Okay, so the way I see lip trills is that they're kind of your sprints to your flexibility on the trombone rather than more of the long distance runs. They're kind of fast and require a lot of agility and explosiveness. So yeah, they're kind of fancy, but if you can get them down, they're extremely beneficial to your trombone playing. How are they beneficial? Well, there's a few ways. First and foremost, they help you with flexibility and facility on the trombone. Another thing is that they can help you with air control on the trombone. So a lot of what you have to do on the trombone requires airflow and part of airflow, a big component of airflow, is what you do with your tongue. So working on lip trills can really help you with the air control because it has a lot to do with what you do with your tongue. And we'll kind of talk about that here in a second. And another nice thing that lip trills can help you with is improve your high range. Of course, for a lot of trombonists, we're always trying to find ways to increase our high range. And overall, it's just a great tool to have in your arsenal. Okay, so let's get right to it. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is let the tongue do all the work for you. You're gonna wanna minimize jaw movement and focus on saying ah, ee, ah, ee, ah, ee, ah. More or less, it really depends on what range of the trombone you're in, but that's just a general guideline. You wanna let the back of your tongue, kinda as you're going, Starting on the lower note, you want to go more of a ah, uh, more of an open sound, and for the higher note, it's going to be more of a e. The back of your tongue here goes up higher. Ah, uh, e, ah, uh, e, ah, uh, e, ah, uh, e. Uh. One thing I do to practice these is a uh, whistle, with that similar movement in my tongue. So another thing you're going to want to do when practicing lip trills is to start slow and speed up in small increments. One common way to do this is with your rhythm. Let's say we're doing the partial from B flat to D in first position. What you can do is start off maybe by playing half notes. Then in the next phase, maybe after a couple of bars, then you do quarter notes. And after a bar of that, you do quarter note triplets, then eighth notes, then triplets, etc. And you're going to want to do that in every position. And I'll show you all what that sounds like. and so on and so forth down all seven positions. So this was just the B flat to D partial. Generally, it does get easier the higher you go in the range because the partials and overtones get closer together. But if your range isn't so developed, this might be a little trickier. I know when I was first starting to learn these, that was the case with me. So it was actually easier once I started working on lip trills to lip trill in the lower range. But after a while, as you get better and you start using your air more efficiently, then of course it gets easier in all the ranges. Okay, so that was a B flat to D partial. You're also gonna wanna practice it in the next partial up. And the D to F partial, the F to A flat slash G partial. What I do instead of skipping straight to B flat above that is I do like the G A partial. And then, of course, the B-flat to C, and then I don't usually go past the C to D partial even above that, but you can keep going higher and higher. There's people that are amazing at this and they can do it like up in the really high F range and probably even B-flat, double B-flat range. Uh, but once I get to the higher range, then I can go back down and uh, do the F to B-flat range. And then even the B-flat to F partial. Uh, 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 
And I haven't tried going lower than that, but I have a feeling it's extremely difficult. Okay, so another thing that I do when practicing lip trills that your instructor or maybe you may not even agree with is to take a step back from the regimented exercises like the one I just demonstrated. Take a step back from that and just free myself up and play as fast as I can. What this does is kind of push your abilities without having that limitation of playing things perfectly in time. So here's what that sounds like. <laughs> Again, this is just something I like to do to push my own abilities. You don't have to do it if you don't agree with it or if your instructor doesn't advise it. So the final couple of things is to one, be patient as you're working on these. It's not going to happen overnight, maybe not even within a week or two. But over the next few weeks and f next few months, if you keep practicing this every day, it will get better and you will get there. So be patient, and the other thing is to apply it to whatever pieces or improvised solos you might be using it. Here are a couple of possible ways that you can use a slip trill. In a jazz improvisation setting, it could be something like this. I'm kind of exaggerating there, but you get the point. So that's everything for this week. If you found this video useful, please like it and share it and consider subscribing. If you have any questions or comments or requests, please leave them down below. And otherwise, until then, we'll see you all next week. Happy practicing.